A little tap. There you go. You get a little tap tap. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Um, welcome back to another episode of Those Boys. My name is Nathan. And I am Zach. This is episode 26. Episode 26. Indeed. This is the podcast where two pastors' kids who are brothers decided to be those boys who started a podcast to talk about their religious trauma. Their religious trauma. Because we made it out alive. Not everyone does. Not everybody does. Some make it out alive. But as we have learned from watching The Last of Us, mm. some be zombies. Some become zombies. All of us are of the spirit, though. And um, so whether we see someone and we're like, there's a zombie. Mm. I think there's a something very close to home there mm. it's not too too far to like become a zombie i think mm. every day is a new day to maybe be a what zombie think, or not yeah what do you think would make in society what would be the metaphor what do you think would make someone a zombie would it be like conforming to the like the structure of society in such a way that you're not really being human i mean i i think that like like a zombie you mean like so once again this is me like judging other people of what i assume like if I'm judging somebody to try to fit, to say that they're like more zombie like, I think anything that sucks all the joy out besides one thing. So if like one, th if there's one thing that's providing joy but nothing else does, then that's like a very limited source of joy. So you have to have that source of joy, and if you don't have that source, everything else is dead. Yeah. What's the point? So maybe someone who has fixated all of their joy in one thing literally one thing in those moments are you know maybe not in that but in that moment that's a zombie like behavior zombies just eat they just, flesh mm. <clears throat> one thing it's like a craving and so and it needs it and so you know drug addiction can cause zombie like I feel like drug addiction would be trying to avoid the reality of what would be being a zombie i think you're trying to like hide from the unhappiness you feel yeah maybe i think there's like a lot of reasons why people find themselves using substance to feel the best they can feel when everything else feels like death i think is what's dangerous about a lot of certain like painkillers alcohol you know like when a, you know like there are certain drugs that are just you try them once like a certain painkillers, you people try them once and then they're just like, oh, well, life is not nearly as good unless I'm taking that narco. And so that that becomes like It depends joyful. on what your definition of what good feels like. Yeah. Because, I mean, yeah, it feels like relaxing to take a painkiller because it's the with the chemicals it puts in your brain. But when you really analyze how you're actually feeling, you're just feeling number. Right. And if you're looking to actually better yourself, taking a Norco is not going to really make you feel better. You're just going to feel more numb. Right. But I think that like, if you're trying, if, yeah. So that numbness is like more, it's like joyful. Yeah. I don't know. I think it can be something that like, like I don't know, like trying to figure out what zombie like, but some days I feel like a zombie. I feel I, a lot less zombie, like more now in my life than ever. I feel. To be honest. Yeah. Maybe when I was like in my, Teens. Like, what does it mean to like feel alive and to thrive? I feel like I had been using like alcohol was very numbing for me mm. in the way that I would use it. And like, and I didn't realize how numb numbing it was for me until I have been off of it now for like 14 months. And so like now that I've had all this time off of it, um, you know, like I actually can recognize how much it had like a lingering, like if I got hammered on a Friday night and was super hungover on a Saturday that lingering hangover type of like alcohol fadiness, mm. I think like had an effect on my, like I might be really anxious the next day being hung over, but then like the following days there would be like, I'd be so slow that it was almost like did help my anxiety. And so, sometimes I know what you're talking about, but it, you'd have to be really hung over. Right. My thing. Exactly. Is, and that's like <clears throat> traumatic. Yeah. But like you don't realize how traumatic it truly is until you're completely for me, like, just my own personal experience, like, oh, I was really like medicating myself in an unhealthy way. I loved the excuse to not have to do anything because I was too hungover. 
So if I partied hard the night before, I would know, oh man, it's Saturday. I don't have work tomorrow. I'm doing nothing because Mm. I know how hungover I'm going to be, except go to the gym. And I would force myself to get to the gym and whether I threw up in the morning or not, I'm getting to the gym. I'm going to get an hour in, then I can come home, do nothing. I'm going to sleep the day away. Mm. And there's something back then that was so peaceful about that, that thinking about it now, legit, I'm like, I don't know if I'm not, I don't think I can do that. I don't yeah. think I can do that. I had, uh, we went out to dinner last night and I had like three drinks. You went to dinner at your new job, right? My you went new, and tried the new, new the food. The new food. The amazing. Five, the five star. Amazing food. Blew my mind. Blow my mind. The, the, restaurant you went to blow my mind yeah no it legit man like the come it, on over put my I mouth can't wait. on my mind <laughs> i can't wait for you and megan to come in because it's pretty like it's pretty surprising how fancy it is yeah um and when you get your food you're like holy are they small portions some of the dishes are small portions it's kind of like, like the it, entrees and here's a dollop of bon punt with a sprig of garlic fry. so we started with uh campari uh capacci crudo Capache crudo. Which is going to be like a raw fish. And then um, what did she get? Oh, and then we got um, the yellowfin tuna ceviche, which was really good. Yellow tuna. Yellowfin tuna ceviche. Yellowfin tuna ceviche. But then we got the bread and butter. Dude, the bread and butter is Japanese milk bread made in-house, also with house cultured butter. So it's mm. like you get homemade butter. Dude, the butter, I could just be like... So oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't mean to like rip in, interrupt, but like you literally just stimulated a memory and I don't want to get too like far on before this gets worse because I want to get cold, but yeah. I brought you a treat today. Oh, here we go. Um, Cause you just said bread and butter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember last, wasn't it last, the last podcast where I was telling you how I was getting into those projects and being in the kitchen and like, yeah. how, like manipulated my mind to do projects, not always in the garage, but yeah. in the kitchen. And did I, was it the last cast that I mentioned? The whole how I got into making sourdough. Hmm. Did I tell you that? I don't think you said it on the last cast, but you did say you like your kitchen projects. I must have said something. Maybe I didn't because I got into it. If I did, forgive me for repeating it, even though I edit the cast. It's like, I can't remember. We talked about it last week. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I got really into making sourdough. Uh, cool. And my gosh, blow my mind. Blow my mind. I had so much fun and I'm like totally into baking. Cool. And uh, over the last seven days, I'd ordered... Uh, a San Francisco, old San Francisco, sour, like dry sourdough starter. What do you mean by that? And uh, so sourdough starters are basically just yeast and flour and water. And the yeast feeds off the flour and water over time and grows. And then that like ferments and then you add a little more flour and water and it ferments and you add a little more flour and water. And the next thing you know, you have like this half mason jar of like bubbling, flowery, yeasty, smells sweet and sour. And that's like, so I got like a little packet of old school sourdough yeast that's been like dried for from years and years ago and uh, added a little warm water to that and mix that up and fed it over like, took me like five days to get it to a like bubbling yeast sourdough starter. Mm. And that's what you use to make with like whole wheat and flour. And yeah, so it's a whole process and I had no idea until I got into it. And once again, big shout out to YouTube for teaching me not only how to place tile years ago, but also how to make sourdough. So everyone out there that's making these tutorials and helping, I feel like we're, are we part of that community yet? Uh, I mean, I'm making, I made tutorials. We're for creators, music. right? We're like yeah. helping, not even tutorials. Oh, you mean, you mean for like those boys? We're just part of like the YouTube. Definitely. Right? I mean, we're episode 26, so I feel dog, like, we apart. I feel so happy to be part of the family, you know, like, cause <laughs> I'm like learning how to do sourdough and then I'm thinking like. I really want to be able to give Zach a piece of my sourdough on the cast that we're going to be putting on YouTube, which I yeah. learned how to make from YouTube. There we go. Full and um, so I finished my first loaf and it came out beautiful. I'm just came so out good. Oh yeah. my gosh. So Daddy's here is it. your first whole wheat and white flour. Oh, dude, I can't do wheat flour. I have alluvium. Sourdough. Look at that crust. Celiac. Okay. There's butter he, on it. He, if you're just listening, Nathaniel just handed me a piece of, I mean, it looks like seafood, but we're going to call it bread. Um, little brother, it's, little brother syndrome. It's wet. Um, ooh, smells Zach, like, a, are you going to be rude right now? Nathan, I am tasting your bread. Relax. I should smells, not have done this. Um, smells good. Smells like bread. Yeah. Switch it up. Um, <laughs> uh, looks like bread. Um, now, uh, Cheers. Let's see if it tastes like bread. Hey, by the way, real quick, this better be better than what you had last night at that restaurant. 
It won't be. Shut up. Okay. It really won't be. I am your family. ASMR. Come on. What do you think, man? What do you think? This is the first loaf you ever made. First loaf I ever made. Dude, for your first loaf, it's fucking good. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Thank you. I can't wait for your 10th loaf because it'll be so oh, good. Oh, man. Just finish that. Like the chewiness, too, that I got. And I took it out a little bit early. So the crust mm -hmm. is a little bit crunchy, but chewier. But that sour, like that chewy sour. Mm. It's good. Thank you. Oh, that. Cr if you're just listening, as Zach just said, he is trying my first ever sourdough loaf and the sound of the crunch on his teeth. Gonna smacking against his lips. Not that. What? Do it for the cash. You stop. You don't happen to be sick anymore, do you? Because last time I shared something with you, I got sick. No, you didn't. Congratulations, Nathan, for making your first loaf of sourdough. I'm going to be making sourdough now um, at the house. We weren't going to buy it anymore. Mm. <laughs> nice. Okay. The ASMR was sounding really good for a second, and now it's disgusting. If you're listening, Rosara, but we're eating <laughs> sourdough, homemade. Everyone just stopped listening. This, the viewership ends right here. I'm going to pull the mic away to finish this, and then we're going to jump in to our topics. So we go, we go to the restaurant. I had like three drinks, right? Mm, that was good. Um, and woke up today, like, I don't really drink that much anymore. And when I do, I've noticed that the next day I'm so anxious, but like, drink. but like such like a panicky anxious that I cannot control. Mm. And uh, I'll wake up. Sounds real healthy. Oh, it's not healthy at all. And I'll, and I'll wake up and be like, like panicking and know that I have to get up and I have to start the day and I don't want to. And it's all from just having a couple of drinks. I won't mm. even get drunk. Uh, you know, it sucks when you take it away. It's fine if you just keep going, just I keep know. going. Then you don't notice because that dementia, that like weird alcoholic dementia just kind of follows you around. And you don't notice. It, and then you're like, then you take a break yeah. and you come back and you're like, I got, I got, I got a little sick. And then I was like really anxious. Yeah. I don't know if this is for me. <laughs> I would just so much. I mean, honestly, I've really been indulging a lot more in sales, i and weed, but mainly I smoke weed pretty much every single night. And that's just, that does it for me, man. Like, if, if I could say there's something nice by having one drink and it like, and weed, but more than one drink is just like the end. Now I don't, mm. I don't feel good after it. Even during, like it kind of ruins my night. I start to kind of feel gross. I get really tired. I'm not motivated. It used to be different. I used to like take two shots and want to party and, and make love to all the women's. <laughs> and now it's like, uh, daddy tired. Yeah. No. Yeah. Too much. You're done, so Yeah. I got to go to bed. I don't know if that's old. Getting older, if legit my body is like, you drank all the drinks you can handle in your 20s. Well, here's what I'll say mm -hmm. is it might feel based on society's terms that you're getting older by changing yeah. out of that. But in many regards, you're becoming like a child all over again. Mm hmm where like the energy in my experience is through the roof. My early, every day is an early morning. Yeah. Every night's a good night of sleep for the most part. But it's not just one thing, man. That's just one thing. One oh, thing out of so yeah. many things. But depending on how much personal shame we have around certain things, we tend to obsess over them. At least that's, I'm not speaking for you, but just in this cast can be a lot of, there's a lot of different things out there where it was like, maybe when you were raised to think something's evil and bad, that like, then when you have the choice to do it, it's like, are we really doing it for always the reason just to get drunk? Or was it the reasons because we're like shameful over I, it? I honestly think we drank to just like blind ourselves from how we actually felt in the moment. I mean, it's fun. I had, I was a great, I mean, so, partied so hard. I think I like Andrew Santino talks about drinking in such a, or like the way he talks about it. I like, I'm like, oh yeah, you know, like, 
go from bar to bar. You get a little buzz off the first one. You and your friends are joking with that bartender and you guys are like, you know what? Let's go up the street to John's and John's. And you go up to John's and John's and you get it like a shot of whiskey and you play some shuffleboard and you're all laughing. The bartender is like, round on me. And you're like, round on the bar. What's your name? And he gets off. He meets you at the next bar. Next thing you know, you're like best friends with the bartender at the last bar. That's just not, that's just not true. What do you I, mean? I'm the bartender. We don't like you. We are acting. No, dude, you work at five stars. I lived in no, San Francisco. No, dude, I've, I've, worked, I've worked at a dive bar. I've worked at a very fancy resort. And now I'm working at five stars. I'm just talking about my experience, yeah. not your, because you're very different. I don't know. Um, you like to go home. I think that like, I'm, ta- I'm just talking about my San Francisco times. Yeah. And talking about drinking in a good light. I'm talking about the fun parts about it. I don't think it always has to be a negative thing. I think people are just trying to have fun. I think what we talk about is, we, we are victims of severe religious trauma and that's why we're on this podcast talking about it. And I have a, I've like drank in ways where the reason why I haven't drank for 14 years is because I, I don't know how to do it. Mm. I can do it a handful of times really, really well. And then every so often it was really, really, really bad. So it's like, does doing 10 <clears throat> things well and then once really bad make you good at it? Mm-mm. No, it just seems dangerous for someone like me. And so until I feel safer about whatever it means for me, there's other things out there that I can do. Reality is, I mean, I I don't, I'm not trying to say there's anything wrong with like drinking it, the bar life. And if you're consistently in bars and that's what you do is you go to bars and you drink with your friends. That's all you do. You go hop bar hopping and that's what you do. There's something lost there. There's something that is, if the alcohol wasn't there, would you be here? It's like, no, you wouldn't. No, would you hang out with these friends if the alcohol wasn't there? No, you wouldn't. And I'm not. And that's like the, that's the reality, right? Yeah. It's like, that's why it was so hard to, I mean, that's like a part of me and Megan's relationship, you know, is like, it's still learning the dynamics of how she still drinks and I don't. And, mm-hmm. and me like learning how to accept how different her and I are. And like, it's just really like, it's awesome that some people can have a a drink and be really happy with one and be content and to each their own. And so I'm like, Hey, if that's, that's, if that's your mode, then that's awesome. My mode, I used to say that, but it just is not true. Mm. I, I, I chase most things, Mm. whether it be a Peloton bike or a bottle of whiskey, Mm. I can chase them. Like I'm a pro Mm -hmm. doesn't mean I have to do it every night. I can do the Peloton every night, but I can like, drink i can drink like a real good party or like on a friday night and a saturday night and then not at all well you used to be able to i don't think you could do anymore (laughs) and i'm I'm like we're good yeah i really do feel really really content without it um i love not drinking as much i'm but i I also still drink here and there but i I really like we should we should jump into it let's talk because we're kind of we're kind of talking about the subject um so uh Thanks for listening. If you've been following us the last few episodes, we have been on a five. Oh, you got to stop doing that in the mic, bro. I, it I tur- hurts I, so I bad. I turned away. I turned away. You cough must- right in. The- Sorry, everybody, if you're listening. <laughs> stop. I'm breathing. Just cover. Just push the mic away, please. Because um, we've been on like a five part series talking about our like some more umbrella topics around trauma and our experience in the church when we were kids we've talked about prayer we talked about worship Worship. and then last week we talked about the rapture and we have two more episodes that we were planning on doing for four and five which we still are um but given the circumstances of some things that happened over the last couple days and some uh kind of in the same topic what we're talking about now um we decided to kind of just not really just shoot the shit. We've been shooting the shit, but more of take a step back from our f- trauma series because it has been a little bit um, heavy. And um, recently I have personally done some uh, healing work. Mm-hmm. And um, well, we've both been uh, doing pretty consistent healing work over time. And then y- you recently just did like a big. I did like a, a, it got more spiritual cleansing. Mm-hmm. Um day mm-hmm. of tea drinking <laughs> and uh did you is that how friends you, is uh well let's just get cut right to it you did some psilocybin yesterday yeah um i've been microdosing psilocybin for i think i want to say six months now yeah um and i've just had a world of change and so has your fiance and so have you been experiencing some of this change and 
you guys took a pretty good amount yesterday to kind of have like a spiritual day and you totally did. I can't wait to talk about it with you because we really haven't talked about it. So it's just going to be fun. But I think that the, fo- the topic we want to focus on is, is this mental healing we're kind of having with psychedelics and specifically psilocybin that uh, needs to be talked about more openly. And we have a platform to talk about it and uh, it's changing my life and obviously changing your life. So tell me about it, dude. What happened when you took- It's definitely helping me like get closer to the source that is oneness Mm. with myself and everything. And so I think that I feel really lucky to be able to have like once again found and had a renaissance of like medicinal work that's like I've tried a lot of different medicines. We're talking about alcohol, cannabis. Um, we've been on antidepressants, Adderall, and um, have abused these things, have not abused them, have used them very correctly, and have suffered from severe side effects. And they've helped. They were worse. You know, like there's been a lot of trial and errors throughout life. Did psychedelics a lot when I was younger and then took a big break and they scared me. You know, it's like we have talked about these things a little bit in the church or in our cast, but like how growing up in the church, there's so much spirituality. We talked about that over the last couple of weeks, just having a father that like you were born with having a very spiritual father and prayer and these sessions and worship very close to home psychedelia. Seems like it's always there. And um, something you said um, in episode 24 um, is that transferring out of the church and then getting so involved in EDM and clubbing was like you're out on worshiping again because you would the the scene of taking ecstasy and partying, but not like, but like dancing and everyone's raising their hands. And it's like this collective spiritual environment was kind of like this replacement for what we experienced during worship. And it kind of like when I was making the short of it, I was like, I don't, I didn't recognize what you were saying in the moment, but in reality, dude, totally. Yeah. That's like worship was so ecstasy like. Well, I mean, the church did a real good job on, on like, that's like in that, and you actually said it really good. I think that same cast, which is, you know, that that's like the trick that was like good bands, really good worship, yeah. really good, like euphoric experiences where it was like, how is that not real? It's so yeah. powerful. And it is like, to an extent, of course it's real. How could it not be? That's what meditation is. That's what all of what we're talking about. So um, I think that like dance music was like, yeah, and ecstasy and these other experiences. Like there's, a, there's one thing, man, that I've learned a lot. Very good job. Thank you. In my life recently is, I did some really wonderful medicinal work when I was younger and throughout my 20s. But there was about, I'd say 90% of it was always because I was afraid of everything, really. Even though I didn't say no to it, like I still tried out a lot of things. I was still very afraid that um, there was like 90, 90% that was, you know, meant out of like a party idea so it was like whoa trippy this is fun let's well, do more we, that's all you knew at that age right yeah and that's how it was you know like the way it was taught to me and from our parents and every other adult in the church was like these evil things they felt like drugs and now none of this feels like like no. the things that i'm using which are like organic are like have been around for thousands of years and used in many different ways and have been highly productive Mm -hmm. and you know like i was just reading in a new book i started which you have as well which Mm -hmm. we're going to try to do a book together which we both read at very different paces yeah i'm not worried about it but you you gotta keep me updated on where you're at so that i can know to catch up when i have to michael poland's how to change your mind what the new science of psychedelics teaches us about consciousness dying addiction depression and transcendence um, I'm really excited to break into this. This was a couple of years, I think 2019, maybe 2018. Um, Michael Pone, of course, very popular New York Times bestseller. He's written like <clears throat> nine New York, New York Times bestsellers. When I was about 17, I read Timothy Leary's The, Pol- the Politics of Ecstasy. A little bit, long time ago, 60s, pioneer. Um, and then, you know, around the time of the Renaissance after the 50s, when in the 50s, psychologists and psych- psychotherapists were actually using LSD. LSD was, you know, like an accident in the 1930s by an, a uh, scientist by the name of Hoffman. And um, and it wasn't rediscovered until he accidentally got some on his body and he ingested it. And 
very I think small I, yeah, amount. Yeah, I heard that. And it was like a miracle drug and it was used for all of these things that we are benefiting from it in the 50s. And then there was this, <clears throat> you know, the whole thing that happened in the 60s and the 70s and, <laughs> and all the Reagan, bad, mean like Reagan? Reagan? All of the bad experiences were just propagated on all of the media sources. Mm -hmm. And it was like psychosis, suicide, and all the things. And the fear, 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 fear. Um, and so then it's 2023. And I feel so lucky to have found something that's been around in many different countries. And like, there's just different ideas of psychedelic integrative therapy that we are talking about. And so this yeah. is another book that I have been reading from by James Fadiman, who's a what rather well-known um scientist <clears throat> sorry i uh when i choke on that water it's like stuck in my it's okay. windpipe this one's the psychedelic explorer's guide safe therapy and sacred journeys and no matter what your views are on psychedelics i understand um there's a process in a culture of in society it's like there's so much dogma against it and fear and whatnot but um, and I'm also scared to even talk about it on the cast because I still feel like there's all this legality and like I would hate, I don't know, you know, but I know there's nothing to worry about, right? I'm not, I'm not worried about being in California and talking about it. Um, there's people in Los Angeles on their podcast talking about it left and right. Like like they go to these events and they take a bunch of mushrooms or ayahuasca or all these things, right. LSD. It's very popular and you can't really like, I'm not worried about legal issues with it. It's more of just the stigmatism behind it that's slowly changing. But yeah. um, I don't know, man, I've been on... You've been on drugs or medication. Um, I've been on a lot of medication for a long, 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 long time. Well, not anymore. Not anymore. A long time. Well, you stopped a while ago. Well, I stopped about a year ago. But, yeah. Um, but th and then I got on microdosing because I couldn't, I kind of was booted off my health insurance and then lost my medication, which is fine. I kind of wanted to come off medication, um, but then realized that I still like want, needed to discover still still do need to discover a lot about myself and um it's being, never being on antidepressants is not and has never been or never will be helping me discover myself or discover my issues it's just it would kind of make it easier to not think about them similar to the way alcohol does where it just makes it easier not just to be i'm just gonna be and uh psilocybin doesn't do that some of the times when i take psilocybin um it's terrible. And I say terrible because it's showing me exactly why I feel the way I'm feeling. And um, it allows me to, forces me to deal with certain issues that I can't, I would never deal with on any other medication. Um, and I think that's kind of like the beauty behind psilocybin is the neuroplasticity, but then also like the, like it's such, a, such an eye opening experience in terms of trauma and in terms of uh, growing. Interesting. Yeah, but uh, I really want to talk about uh, yesterday when you, so you said uh, you took a reasonably good amount, right? Like two, two and a half grams. Or something yeah, like so from like what I've been actually trying to learn more on are these, there's three different doses that have been, you know, like were used in a lot of research. Um, there is the microdosing dose, which is like 0.3, somewhere around there. Yeah. Um, and like there's different methods of how to do it and you're not normally supposed to feel anything but i think that that's bs i think most people have um awareness mm -hmm. and it's just so subtle and as i like to call it it's subtly explosive mm -hmm. and then uh the macro dose which is normally about a gram or something and that's what they call a medicinal medicinal dose or when they say they this is just from what i've researched science and then uh, about you know two to three grams is looking more into a spiritual cleansing Mm -hmm. And uh, well, I thought it was the after two year at the macro dose and then the five grams is a spiritual cleansing. I mean, I think that it's, you know, it also depends on the strain. I mean, it's all my, con my, my conium is all about this. I mean, we know this like shrooms are shrooms, psychedelia, yeah. is psychedelia. And there are different strains of like so many different things that do different, that, like have different qualities to them. But I think that like, whether you've read that somewhere, I read things somewhere. It's mm -hmm. like, I would, there's a lot of research out there that seems to be like, I want to learn more about it. But from my experience, I'm learning that now. Mm. And so like from this book, it was saying that normally like anything above two and a half to like four mm -hmm. is a spiritual cleansing. But everything about reaching that state is about space and setting and who you're with and having a guide because, and that's where all of the research and things in Oakland and all over the Bay Area, like these psychotherapy, there's places even here in our hometown that offer 
facilitated, you know, um, integrative psychedelic therapy, especially for ketamine. And um, and uh, yeah, and I don't really know anything about ketamine. I haven't. I've tr- I tried it when I was a lot younger and had the benefits of it and didn't know what it, that mm-hmm. was. That's now so like huge and there's a lot of things there. But yeah, so um, woke up around six a.m. I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you uh, probably yeah. a. Um, a like once again i did a what was the spiritual cleansing Mm -hmm. tea lemon tea that um was subtly explosive and it was spiritual and um and it was a really wonderful uh glossy beautiful experience Mm. and i woke up really early though in the morning because i needed to make my sourdough so i got up about 6 a.m and uh, spent about the first six hours of the day making my first sourdough loaf. Wow. And until my friends woke up and joined at me. At noon? Until about noon. They woke up at noon? Well, no, they were up and okay. whatever. And I don't want to speak too much about anybody else besides myself. <laughs> this is my experience and I don't want to speak for anybody else that isn't here. <laughs> um, but so I made all the sourdough and it's my first time. And, you know, given I was really nervous about this uh, medicinal time together and like this experience for me and I've been kind of you know, really meditating and sitting on this integrative therapy and what it means for me and what it means for you and how it's affecting my life. And same thing as you just said, like the micro dosing wasn't a, a couple of weeks ago that I did a couple of micro doses and it was a really learning weekend, but it was a really tough one. Mm-hmm. And like, I've noticed that with the smaller doses, I respond differently depending on my diet at the time, who's around, you know, like it's still very powerful in its own subtle ways. And the bigger dose seemed to be something where like, oh, oh, I, I think I, I think I understand why I'm doing, oh, it's like, there's no denying yeah. and it's overwhelming. And so it's like, we're here. Yeah. And so I did the lemon tea probably around noon and it was about a two hour mountain climb. And mm-hmm. so the mountain climb was shocking. It took about two hours and the mountain climb, we're talking some deep breathing, maybe sweating. And then I started to get extreme shivers and like coldness. Nothing was too overwhelming. Um, doing the lemon tea and filtering out all of the substance really helps with any stomach aches. And supposedly, even though not scientifically proven, helps absorb into the bloodstream a lot better. Mm-hmm. Well, um, it breaks down the chitin a little bit. Yeah. It helps break down the chitin so that the psilocybin has quicker access to your blood. Yeah. But we filter it out, and so it's just this wonderful lemonade drink. And uh, then, uh, as the mountain was being climbed, around one thirty, sourdoughs done. Which do not advise heating up a five hundred degree oven with a Dutch oven inside and doing sourdough while climbing mountains. <laughs> um, but we made it out alive, and I made a checklist of everything on paper and scratched off everything on the checklist. So I didn't miss, miss anything. Sourdough comes out. We let it air dry. Things are getting rather overwhelming inside the house. We need to leave. We need to get out of the house. We need to go for a walk. We have to get out of here. We have to get out of here. We have to get out of here. It's time to move on. Mm -hmm. Maybe something about traveling like into a, as you're making your way to a new plane, subtle. Mm. Am I here? Am I not? That experience of climbing the mountain or that transfer to the next, to another plane, just adding more to the perspective, if you will, um, can be, it's like traveling anywhere else. It takes a while. You can be patient. And sometimes it does feel like you're hiking up a mountain, right? On the insides, digestively and mentally. And like, uh, it takes a while to get to the other side, if you will, to feel at peace, to feel calm and to be there. And mm-hmm. then to be like, it's up to me. I get to decide where I go from here, how much I want to learn. And that's like the shocking thing about psilocybin is that after you climb that mountain, you get somewhere safer. Yeah. It's always safe. It's just the without having the right team or the right support system or somebody there to help you understand what you're feeling and maybe why you're feeling it, just like any other medicine, side effects. And so I knew these side effects mm-hmm. and was prepared for them. I had a light breakfast. We all shared a piece of sourdough looking at each other in the kitchen. And it was so, I'm going to say it, erotic. <laughs> Cutting open fresh sourdough that I had baked over, made the start over seven days, this whole new project. There's something so like, patient about sourdough making you have to be so patient for everything to rise and you go back in and you knead the dough and then you rise it and you fold it and you fold it and you fold it just to get more you know all the make it tougher and stronger Mm -hmm. and so being able to have that first slice of 
homemade like as i cracked it open it was just like steam went mm. and we were all like oh, <laughs> oh butter 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 and it was all very intense yeah and we all bit into the bread together and we were all like oh we have to go outside now and like like the knives were left there and the butter is out and the bread's just there and so we just took out took the dog and went out to the dog like there's this huge open grass field with these big huge trees mm. takes about 30 minutes to get out there to this field so we all get out there and immediately when we get outside it was like ah. so you can breathe mm. so sometimes you got to get out you got to change the space because you're traveling it's easy to move you know as we walk you know and this movement, you know, like helps us think or whatever. And so as we're walking, we go through the neighborhoods. We're saying hi to neighbors and the colors are getting brighter and stronger. And yeah. How long is this into the trip? This is about 2.30 p.m. now. And so we're talking about two hours, maybe about after we'd taken it. So aren't you fully We got in there right, in right, right when we went outside. It was like an hour and a half inside the house, finishing the sourdough and whatnot. And, uh, and then it was about, you know, two hours until we were like peaking. digestively good. And um, peaking is interesting because... It's not a drug. It's like there's it's not whatever like type of thing you just it's it's ego shattering. And the moment you're like working through it and you get to where you need to be, it's shockingly beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's subtly explosive. Mm. I have felt the pain. I have like suffered so long to be here now. Mm. So I am. Mm. So I will be. So I walk. And like as we're out in the neighborhoods and cars pass, I start making jokes, noticing that I'm connecting with everything around me, hyper aware. There's a neighbor on the roof. Hey, he waves back. Keep walking. There's a man building a new deck, beautiful redwood. And we all look at the redwood and my friend goes, wow, look at the redwood. And I go, sir, we love your redwood. And he goes, thank you. You're welcome feels that way right i'm like this is this is wonderful to be here to mm -hmm. be alive why aren't we at the park yet <laughs> what time is it yeah <laughs> we've been walking for hours yeah and it had been like 20 minutes yeah and that's when we all of us were like ah time gone because mm -hmm. it was there now time is gone it felt like hours we were on that walk we'd seen so many neighbors and i was just like Okay, so time is like being aware of that. Now time is no longer a problem. Time is not something I'm bound by. I'm becoming unwound. Mm. I'm unbound to the vessel or I'm unbound to things that I'm always bound to. Mm. Time is now gone. Um, and But every neighbor and every car and we cross a street, I would feel my anxiety. It wouldn't feel scary. I would just feel myself needing to say something. And I'm recognizing I'm getting a little more worked up just being around people that I, you know, wasn't around us. It was like other people around neighbors and stuff. And I was like, man, we got to get to this park. Started to feel this need to get to the park. And the quicker we, the closer we got to the park, I was like, I need to get to this park. <laughs> we have to get there now. And I, in my head, I was like, you know, that's how I feel. And I'm thinking this before we get to the park. I'm like, you know, I feel like being around other people, I act out. Like just being around people, humans. Mm -hmm moving like activity, stress, cars. I start to like make jokes and act out and like try to get people to laugh. I'm like, you know, Nathan, shut up. Mm. Just get to the park. And I was like talking out loud this way. Like you guys, I, I think I just like, I'm acting out a lot around people, you know, because like, I'm like, like I want to, we need to get to this park. And they're like laughing because I'm making them laugh. But inside <laughs> I'm like, Nathan, shut the fuck up. Mm -hmm. And I was like telling myself, shut up, just stop, dude. Like, I know you're nervous. I know you're like, you have social anxiety. You're feeling that to the max right now and you're not scared, but this is why you're acting out. Mm. Just stop. And it was like the whole walk there was an experience of so much of my social anxiety projection. Mm. The moment we cross the gates into the park, it's just nothing but green fields and these two giant trees out into the distance. And then like we go through the gate, another one of those moments for me. Uh, and it was like another space transition where I could breathe and I was away from people and I just saw grass and the trees and the dog just takes off gone happiest dog in the world our dog and you're just like 
well, he's on shrooms every day. That's not fair. Dogs have it so, dogs are so happy. They go into mm. a field, you're just me like, this is the happiest dog in the world. Mm. I could learn something from you. Look at you, you're just enjoying growth and bugs and like, so he takes off and that was wonderful. And my friends, they walk their direction and I just like went through that gate and just saw this tree and I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, that tree looks really beautiful. It's muddy out and there's big grass, you know, it's just green grass and mud. So it's just, you're just like, I wore my nice boots that I just bought in my head. I was like, Nathan wore his nice boots out in a muddy field. And I got this feeling of like, I, I can't go out to the tree. It's too muddy. And immediately out loud, I went, shoes are for getting dirty. <laughs> Tied them up, started walking. It was just like ego, ego shattering, you know, like Nathan, you buy shoes to get dirty. So I go out to this tree. And, uh, my friends are now way off, gone. And it's just me in this gigantic tree. And I'm looking at all the bark, you know, and it's like the porousness of the bark is like succulent. It's like real. It's like, it's obvious that it's like the skin of the tree, like the skin of my skin. It's like mm. I can see the cracks and I look at my hand and I'm like looking at the tree bark. And I'm feeling somewhat of that oneness mm. now being in this field away from people. I can just, just can hear me starting to hear me, not the commanding voice, like chill, chill, chill. It's more of like, this is awesome. How much similarity there is to the porousness of this tree in my hand. And I kneel down closer because it's too hard to stand. You know, it's like, it's too much to stand. So I kneel down and when I kneel down, there's, this knot in the bottom of the tree, right where the dirt is. And it's this beautiful circle, the crack that goes all the way down the tree and the circle, like all of the rings come in. It's like the, the knot started to form in until it got to the circle of maybe, maybe where the tree grows, part of that knot grows, mm -hmm. the tree grows out of. And it was like this dark hole in the mid middle. And it's like, if you can imagine like, this is the tree, right? Like how trees kind of have this knotted look to them and there's like the circle there and there's like all these circles coming out and it's like a big knot and i'm looking at that hole and in my head i go like this classic nathan mm -hmm. oh this would be like a great beginning to like a netflix show or a hollywood movie where like the kids go to the tree and they look into the eye of the tree and mm -hmm. the tree takes them to a new portal mm -hmm. and, and then they're they wake up and they're in the same land but it's a different time period mm -hmm. you know and that's how I'm thinking. I'm like classic Nathan, always thinking about Hollywood. Mm -hmm. And right away, my voice, my near voice, it feels like me goes, Nathan, you're always thinking about different planes. You always tell people like you always think you're always acting like you're always on a stage. That's how nursing feels. Isn't that kind of like a different plane? Isn't that why you enjoy acting is because it forces you to be in kind of a different perspective. It was, it was like my voice was like, go more. Mm -hmm. Get it. You always go to that plane. You're good at that. Go deeper. And the moment that I was like, okay, let's go deeper. The knot now was like this turned into knuckles mm. and the knuckles were like here and the knuckles were like holding like something. Mm. And I was like looking into it and all of a sudden, like the hands were like prying open, if you will. And I was like, still in my own thoughts, like, that's so interesting. They look like hands. And it was like, oh, the hands are like holding the hole closed because mm. there's so much trying to come out right now, but it, it, it can't. It needs to hold it in because if it pours out, it would explode. So these hands are just holding all this energy together. And that's why this tree is so powerful and old and has so much like ability to be here for so long because there's so much energy on the inside and it's mm. holding it. And then it was like, with like, a, right when I thought that and I just created that idea because I could see the hands they became hands mm. and the hands were like my hands and then I was like is that you and the hands are like and I could feel them on my chest mm. and I just looked into this hole and I just felt myself feeling my hands over my chest like this and I was like Nathan you have so much love in you man mm. that it hurts sometimes the way you let it out and you have to you have to learn how to let that love out and shine in like the ways they should be because you are mm. not because you have to not because you should but because you are and i was like holding this light inside of me like as if it feels that way at times for me to like 
hold it in. And if I let things out, nobody understands me. Mm -hmm. <sighs> and I was like, I feel so old sometimes. I feel so like rough and porous. And I'm just like, nobody in like, but the way I was looking at this tree was like, oh, just like the hand and the porous of my hand. These hands on the knot. I am the tree. Mm. Like I am the tree. And like the oneness hit. Mm. And I like was looking at it and I was just started crying. Mm. And I was like, and I could breathe again. And I stood up and I looked up at the whole tree and I was just like, thank you. Like thank the tree, but mm. I thanked myself because mm. I was like there. Mm -hmm. And the moment I like turned to look where my friends were and I was like, time to walk. And as I walked, man, my inner voice, that inner voice I have every day, the inner voice I have every day, I wake up those thoughts that lie to us, mm. you know, the things that play in my head and the inner voice was so wonderful. And it was, it wasn't sure. It felt like someone else maybe if I wanted it to, but it was all me. Mm. And the voice was like, move with me. And I would be like, and be like, the voice would just be like, you're so good. Mm. You're so love. You're so light. You're like molecule. And it was like very psychedelic. And every yellow flower I'd come by, I'd get down really low and I'd look at it. And I would like see the flower's purpose was like here for the sun mm. every day, whether I'm there or not. The purpose of that flower is so meaningful. Every day it's there to praise the sun and the roots feeding whatever it needs to and it's feeding it. And the grass feeding the sun or feeding from the sun what purpose and i like looked at the yellow flower and like looked up at the sun and it was like i am purpose mm. i always ask myself like what's my purpose my, i want to be on stage i, I want to make music again i want to write and it was like but nathan you're good your love your light you are the tree you are the grass, you are the flower, you are what purpose is, your purpose in all of its forms. You just being a being is all the purpose that you mm. ever need to be. Mm. You are purpose, Nathan. Now walk and stand up. And I'd be like, my purpose is here now. Like my purpose is to walk. My purpose is to be mm. nothing else. Mm. And there was like this immediate freedom that I had around music about what I wanted to do with the cast. It was like, every thought was like, I am purpose, which means I don't have to do anything because I am okay. Mm -hmm. I am good. I am love. And like, yeah, it was just one of the, it was a powerful time in that field. Um, and so we went back to the house. I met up with my friends and we had some more walk back and I got to practice more of my immediately being around neighbors again yeah. in cars and feeling not scared, but uncomfortable and making jokes and being like, that's wild how quickly I get to practice again mm. and being like, so is life every day, every moment's like, ah, I got to keep practicing and not lose my shit. <laughs> And we get back to the house and it was got the records on and lighting on and pretty quickly things started, you know, after about six hours, you know, we'd been out for like three hours and if not more. And so it was about six hours total time, about six, 7 p.m. comes around and things start to land back mm -hmm. or at least it feels like we're done. We're back. We're nothing. You're never not really done. Like today has been a day of reintegration. And then I just created a vibe of just beautiful, wonderful music, soul music and light. And we all just sat and we ordered Puerto Rican food and we feasted like kings and queens mm. and just felt so blessed and lucky. And we all broke down our experiences and just had a really healing time of what we, I like to call reentry, which is just like, let's figure this out. Let's put meaning to this. Mm -hmm. Life is joy and suffering. I just want to have meaning. There's so much joy and there's so much suffering. Let's put some meaning to it. Mm. And there was so much joy and suffering in the, in the, you know, traveling experience yesterday. And so let's put some meaning to it. Mm. And I put so much meaning to everything. So by the very end of the night, 10, 30, 11 PM, we're all about to go to bed. And I went 
you guys, if, if it's okay, I'd like to turn all the lights down and I want to put on some psych. Like I found a mix online that's been specifically used for um, psychedelic therapy. And you put on headphones and there's a guide that's there with you for five hours and you close your eyes. And, and the music was just outstanding. And it was very euphoric. And so I put it on and I lay on the ground. Meanwhile, I'm thinking that we're done and I've just made it back and we're just coasting on the wonderful joys of and like the like lingering effects of psychedelia or psilocybin which are just very much anti-anxiety very much anti no depression just feel very at peace and i'm sitting there and i close my eyes and the music's playing and my friends they're at peace like doing their meditation and um and i'm just listening to the music and i was just like man this is really wonderful music it'd be funny if it made me cry <laughs> and i just like <laughs> wait what's happening and it was like, oh no. <laughs> and I just felt this blanket of warm glow like go over me. And mom and dad hit me in my mm -hmm. brain. And I saw dad and mom, must have been the 90s. And there's me, and we're in a field, very similar to the field I was just at. Mm. But I'm four, <clears throat> and I'm running. And I can kind of see me, but I'm kind of first person. And I see dad, his hands are out and he's got his like red hair, big red <laughs> hair. And mom's got her long black straight hair as she used to have it. And, or at least it would look black. It was like dark, you know, and like how it came down. And they looked like how these pictures and things I would remember. It felt like a real memory. And there, my dad, dad's got his hands out and he's like, come on, buddy. And they're like running with me and I'm like running towards them. And I'm like bawling. <laughs> and I'm like, I can, like and I'm having this, vision at the same time as like it's so felt it's so emotional it's some of it's visual but some of it's so like oh i'm i i know what's going on mm. it's like it's an interesting experience it's not always mental it's like and uh but i'm crying and i'm like i haven't thought about mom and dad like that in a really long i haven't remembered that. i don't remember that life i don't remember mm. four i can't remember three i can't mm. remember the joys of just that i can remember a lot of the suffering and so I just like loved that to be like, so having a real, like felt like visceral memory of my time being four years old, with mom and dad. Mm. And then like this, I went to Evan's age, 11 and a half. And I saw Evan with mom and dad, our mom and dad. And then it was me and we're, I can't, it was like blurry, but I knew I was 11 and I'm Evan's 11. So I was like such a similar age. So interesting. I'm feeling this. Mm. And then blip, I'm 16 in the kitchen and mom's yelling at me. I'm yelling back at her. We're in some argument. She's yelling, are you on drugs? And I yell back, maybe I am. <laughs> that's it, a true memory. <laughs> yeah, very real. And I, that's why that's why I'm very, very much believe the four-year-old memory too. Because I know the 16-year-old memory is real. And, I, and I'm like not crying anymore. I'm just like, mm, so real. That's what I know is real. And I'm like done. And I finally come back which is like maybe four minutes of just that feeling and experience. And I open my eyes and I see the ceiling and I'm like, I'm going to really start working on remembering mom and dad. Like I'm four mm. just because this podcast and what we're doing is so real. And I know that it's real for them and I ain't going to stop. I plan on getting as deep as I possibly can into our trauma and, the therapy and not being afraid to bring serious awareness to the experiences that we've had without losing sight of the love that mom and dad poured into our lives. And so it's just like hard not to cry when I talk about it because it feels very real and it feels like it's working because there are things that I have experienced with mom and dad that are traumatic, but most kids have traumatic with their parents but I'm like able to choose a different memory, which is like pure joy and life is joy and suffering. And I want to give meaning, not just to suffering. Mm -hmm. I'd love to give meaning to the joy. And that's something I want to start working on. And so after that, we, I stood up, I brought the lights up. They thanked me for a Zen moment that I was like, <laughs> I, I didn't know what we were doing. And I was like, I got to go to bed. <laughs> and so like, we all just went to bed. And then uh, 
woke up this morning and we went out hiking with a bunch of coworkers on the coast and just breathed moist air and saw a bunch of seals and had a wonderful lunch on the coast. And I gave a hug to a totem out in Bodega Bay today. It was just wonderful, man. Now you're here. So damn, man. Sounds like a beautiful time. Yeah. Sounds exactly what psilocybin feels like. Man. Yeah. It was powerful and it was real. And, um, and, uh, I don't take it lightly and I just, yeah, I look forward to the also lingering effects of these bigger doses that are kind of what the micro doses do, which are like just feel more okay, more oneness with my purpose, which is just to be. Yeah. So thanks for listening. 100% man. Great. Uh, that was a great description of what ego death truly feels like um, and looks like and sounds like. I feel like people who haven't experienced an ego death with a psychedelic of some sort, um, mm -mm. you really don't understand it until you feel it and what it looks like for you because it's different for everybody. But like the way you're talking about the tree, the way you're talking about the grass, where you're just so aware of its existence, not yours, but then it makes you aware of your existence and how it's all the same. I mean, yeah. It's like just as important as this tree, you are just as important. And the, the way that you were able to remember a memory of you being four with your parents and being happy. Whether that memory be true or not, doesn't fucking matter. That's what it's telling you is it's, you, yeah. there were times where you were happy with your parents. Remember this. A lot of time. Remember this, look at all the happiness. And then, yeah, you get shown the, the, the terrible times because you are in control and you can remember what you want to remember. And um, yeah, that was just really beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Thanks for being vulnerable. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for listening. I uh, uh, I knew that if I was going to go to talk about this today, I was going to, it's hard not to talk about because I've just been thinking about it nonstop and processing it. But um, I am a crying, I cry, I tear up. It's just, I, it's I like, think that shows that um, <clears throat> you're willing to let the medicine work um, and you're so vulnerable to it in a good way. And I think that that's when the healing is so exponential because you're just letting it be yeah. and uh, you're giving into it. You're re like, I think there's something about reading books on this science and the medicine and then taking it and I doing mean, it. You got to take it, you respect it and take it extremely seriously. And mm -hmm. at the same time, embrace your inner child and have some fun. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be fun yeah, and it's supposed to be joyful. And it's supposed to be suffering. That's a part of what it all exactly. is. Exactly. Every time I've taken a good amount, there's a there's a moment of there's a pretty good moment of suffering. Yeah. It's like the mountain that we always talk about, like climbing the mountain. It's like when you texted me that, and I was like, "How you doing? Like, how's your day going?" And you're like, "I'm climbing the mountain." I totally forgot you were doing it. And uh, I was like, my my first thought was like, "He's gonna have a great time," but this mountain's tough. And so when you said you climb the mountain, I was like, "All right, give him an hour. I'm gonna give him an hour, and then I'll see how he's doing." And I'll, I'll be honest, like the mountain is is like where I. I will say, I really believe that who you're with and anybody that like, you know, having a real guide that isn't doing it, that has the holistic knowledge and experience and research to be able to handle when things don't go well, mm -hmm. if there's fears, anxieties, everyone's new, everyone's trauma is different. Everyone's relationship to this, like diet, exercise, who you're with, space, the time period of the year, like your climate, all of that, I think has direct effects on our perception of everything light. Um, that's like this where, I mean, if you fly to anywhere, you have to hop on a plane and go through security and then take off and land and hope yeah. you make it out alive. <laughs> yeah. And people do it all the time. And when you and I stopped flying a lot and then we started flying again, whenever I did, and like, I remember talking to you and being like, Yo, have you flown recently? Um, it's scary now. Yeah. <laughs> what happened? It was like, oh, you're not a kid anymore. Yeah. It's really scary to fly. Yeah. Unless you practice it a couple of times and it's like, oh, that's fine. Yeah. For the most part. And fine. so climbing, if you want to hike to the top of a mountain, you might trip, you might see bees, you might get stung, right? There's all these threats. But if you stay on the trail and if you're not alone, you might feel a lot safer. Mm. You know, but if you're somebody that likes to hike alone, then you're somebody that likes to embrace that loneliness. Like, you know, I don't know. There's a lot of mountains in life that are tough. You want to lose weight. You want to start working out every day. You have to every day conquer 
the suffering that is, I don't want to do this. Mm. And then you ride the bike and you're like, I'm tired. Some days you're like, I'm strong. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It doesn't, it, it is a day. It's yeah. be embrace what it is that day mm -hmm. and accept the fact that the blade of grass probably didn't want you to step on it, <laughs> but now it has to grow with that crushedness for the next 10 days. Mm -hmm. And then it may, you know, so he's like, Argh! or she's like, thanks for stepping on me. <laughs> and you're like, why, why am I not on the trail? Like I should be on trails if I'm hiking. So I don't like, but then you're stepping on rocks with the rocks. Don't want you to step on. Them. But when you realize that we are just a piece of this, we mm -hmm. are just a part of it. We are it. Mm. Humans are just a piece of the puzzle. We belong here just as everything else is. So respect it. Be aware of yourself. You, me, I'm talking about you and I say me, like, like I can like obsessively collect things on a rapid pace that ruins the environment. That's a beautiful flower. I'm going to pick it and go. Mm. Why do I do that? Why is that okay? Why is it okay just to pick whatever I want? Succulents at the beach or this or that. There's signs everywhere that say, don't do this. You know, like people or tourists are taking succulents at rapid paces. It's ruining the landscape. So they're protected lands. Mm. Everything's becoming private. You go to, you know, the woods, Armstrong woods. or yeah. And it's like, I can't go hike for four hours anymore. No, nope, it's all shut down. Yeah. Kids have been graffitiing the trees. <laughs> Who yeah. would do that? Yeah. And it's like the same thing goes that you pick something that doesn't belong to you. That was there way before you. It was supposed mm -hmm. to be there way after you. You could have acknowledged its existence and been like, we are here together. Yeah. I'll see you later. Yeah. But that's the oneness. Mm -hmm. It helps you be, it helps me be so much more aware of maybe why composting and gardening and making sourdough bread is something that I Composting is something I'm getting better at, but like <laughs> gardening and these these tough patients. You know, mine and Megan's relationship takes patience. Mm. We get into an argument or something doesn't make sense. That feels like you're folding dough to strengthen it, and then you got to put it back into a warm like box and let it rise over an hour. Mm. Don't rush that. Take it out, mold it, fold it, put it back, let it rise. Take it out, fold it, fold it. Let it's it the, rise. It's the work, man. There's something about putting work into something, anything, but putting a lot of work into it and trying to better it and yourself that makes that thing, whatever it is, so much exponentially more important. It takes work. It takes, takes work. time. takes patience. Time is, is of the essence. I understand that. But if I don't believe this is it, mm -mm. so... <laughs> Time ain't of the essence. Mm -mm. And I want to be better at remembering that every day while I'm here. Yeah. The human existence, it definitely, the more psychedelics I do, or the longer I've been microdosing, the more it feels like it's such a small percentage of what could be after this life. What it, whatever this life really truly is, this experience and what we're supposed to do, I think the next life, it'll all make so much more sense. And it's going to be like, Oh, this is, we are so small compared to the bigger picture of what our existence or non-existence truly is. And it's that oneness that I think you feel when you lose the ego, when you really kind of indulge in the psychedelia. It's so wonderful. It it's is. so much easier. And the things we were talking about last week with guilt versus shame mm. and the learning about ourselves, learning where these traumas come from and what they're defining them, putting language to them, giving them space, giving them structure makes it a lot easier to not obsess over certain things. You mm -hmm. know, like, ah, I have so much, I think this is like shameful. I feel so much shame. It feels a lot easier now to see why I'm obsessing over this thing. You mentioning that in that cast, like, dude, still to this day blew my mind that it's not guilt, it's shame. Blow my mind. Blow my mind. Every time. I know. It's, it, 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 that is a mind blower and it's simple. <clears throat> it's so simple, but it makes me feel so much more at peace with the way I feel. Because shame doesn't, I mean, guilt, you did something wrong and you know it. Like you said, it's like you instantly feel guilt and the guilt should be gone the second you solve the whatever the problem is you did wrong or you get it forgiven. And it's like, okay, I'm not guilty anymore. But shame doesn't go away unless you do the work in the in, inner work of figuring out why you feel that shame and solving that problem. And it's a lot more work, yeah. but it's also, for me at least, it's like, of course I'm ashamed. Of course I feel shameful for this, 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 and this. Yeah. And of course it's going to be years and time 
and work because I'm so ashamed. And, and so yesterday when I am going into the park and I'm looking at the tree and I stood up and I'm recognizing how much love and power and lights inside of me and, and it just, it's so hard to contain it sometimes, whatever that is, you know, that I feel that comes out reactiveness. And it was like, you know, rocking around the neighborhoods and having these like explosive like jokes and feeling like they need to make jokes. And like, I'm like judging myself, shame, whatever. And the voice goes, stop, stop, stop. Mm -hmm. It's me. But I'm having like the, the wonderful thing was I had that voice that's like, Nathan, like, stop making jokes is there a lot. And this voice was like, stop making jokes. Stop, 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 bro. Mm -hmm. You good. Mm -hmm. That's what it felt like. It was like, oh, I like you. Mm -hmm. And it was like, hey, 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 you do have a lot of light and you good. Mm -hmm. Like that was it. So simple. Mm -hmm. Like stop with the shame. There's nothing wrong. Mm -mm. You're good. Now walk. You're good. Now do. Why do I do? Because you are. What's my purpose? You are purpose, bro. Mm. Walk. Stop walking. <clears throat> walk, Neil. Mm. Breathe. Be. Look. Engage. Think. Have gratitude. Stand. Move. Your purpose is purpose to be purpose because you are purpose. You are. Like there's mm. just so much mindfulness. And I loved it. I'm all about it. And if you're listening to this cast and you're interested in trying to find inner peace, I don't know. You be the judge. Oh, I would. I wouldn't even say. I don't know. I would say you should probably take some psilocybin. <laughs> I don't know, dude. I used to be terrified. So so scared of psilocybin. I never thought I'd ever take it. Never thought I'd take LSD. And now I'm thinking about it, but, um, I, yeah, psychedelics were the biggest fear of mine most of my life. And boy, was I wrong. Yeah. And it's not a bad thing to, to feel that way. I don't think, I think society didn't you, really make it very welcoming. You to, were, you were, you were taught very, very, very clearly and very intently, very strongly. You were taught yeah. that these drugs will make you see decapitated people. These and I'm not even see the, I was told that if I take mushrooms, I'm going to cut my penis off. You'll cut your penis. Yeah. You'll go crazy you'll forever. You'll go crazy. You'll cut your penis off or you'll jump off a building. And I read like a little bit of a book, have a spiritual awakening cleansing trip. And I go, forgive them for they don't know what <laughs> they, they do. They don't know what they've done. <laughs> Flashback. We call that a callback from the cross. <laughs> um, all right. Well, um, I know we were supposed to get jump into the Gen Z slang, and uh, but what are you thinking? Should we do it? Do you want to play a yeah, game? Yeah, let's just do it. Let's get it done. Let's <clears throat> get to it. You, you really want? You have, I don't have anything with me right now. You have, you have no piece of paper you can throw me real quick? Nope. You definitely do. You could rip one of those off that we're not using. No, because I need them. You need both of them? Yeah, because they're on both. But I thought we only had... 40. Oh, I'm just going to help you. Be quiet. Write that down. Be okay. Uh, before we get into the B game cam, um, e we want to say thanks Q again for being here. And if you're listening uh, or watching a, a very, very long, I know, I was kidding. I, was, I didn't mean that. Like, be quiet. Be quiet. Write down. Um, uh, or casts ago, podcasts ago, we're bringing it back to finally finish it. We started to learn Gen Z slang terms that we have heard. Evan has like the one that opened the door to like, he was saying some things. Sheesh. Yeah, she, she, she. And uh, we were like, felt like such boomers, even though we're millennials and we're like, we can't be boomers when we're millennials. We got to learn this shit. Yeah, got to learn it. And so we've gone through 39 Gen Z slang terms. And normally the way we've done it is I've read them out loud with the definitions. Zach writes them down, makes some jokes. And then we both try to use every single Gen Z slang term in, in a, a sentence and in a description or, yeah. or an experience. And so let's get started, shall we? Let's do Number it. Number 40, sending me. Okay. Sending me. Another term to use if you find something particularly funny. <laughs> so like you're sending, you're sending me. <laughs> Dude, that just sent me. Yeah, it sent me. Got it. Got it. Okay. 41, slaps. Slaps. Okay, so these are good. I like these ones. I, uh, man, that beats slaps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Used to describe how exceptional something is. Yeah, man, 
Damn, your slaps. hair tonight slaps. Thanks, man. Yeah, dude, that trip la yesterday slapped. slapped. Yeah, dude, that is kind of a slap. It's like, hey, ego. Yeah. <laughs> ah! uh, Forty-two, bussin'. A okay. quir a quirky word to use when you taste something delicious. Mmm. Oh, like my sourdough. Oh, that piece of sourdough was bussin'. Interesting. You want to know the artist? That, that, that's the first time I've ever heard the that. artist that's coming to mind that's used the word bussin. Hmm. He's the. I'm so sorry. I'm forgetting his name. Oh no. He's like. He's like. You're. You were in love with him. He's the white boy rapper. Oh, Logic. No. Um, that's old school. White boy. Oh, Jack Harlow. Jack Harlow. He says bussin one of his tracks. Yeah. Oh yeah. Bussin. Oh, oh, oh yeah. She got to when I'm bussin. I'm bussin. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I don't even, maybe that's different, but I think that might be, maybe it's the same. <laughs> maybe he's busting tables. You never American, know. Yeah, I catch him on bus. I don't know. 43, yeah. sus. Okay. We all, we've heard yeah, this, right? Red sus. is sus. You're sus. Red is sus from Among Us. Yes. Short for suspicious, sus is typ typically means something is not as expected or some not as expected or shady. Yeah. Yeah. Red is sus. Super sus. Yeah. 44, snatched. Snatch means... If someone is looking snatched, they look really good, particularly their outfit snatched. <clears throat> Man, there's this though, I think the third or fourth one's come up about looking good, and I haven't heard it. <laughs> snatched. Man, you look snatched. We we talked about snackery, right? Like, dude, yeah. You, man, you you look you looking like a snack tonight. <laughs> but snatch is like, mm, like I could snatch you up. You're looking snatched. Uh, That's a good movie with Brad Pitt, Snatch. Yeah. You like Dags. Yeah. Dags? Dags. You like Dags. <laughs> Dags, what are you saying? What is he saying? Dags, dags you like dags? Dogs, dogs, sure, I love dogs. Number 45, <laughs> guap. Guap. Money and lots of it. That's what that means. I got, dude. <sighs> yeah, I got plenty of guap. Be bussing on that. Yeah, dude, I have so much guap. It's, it's bussing. It almost slaps. I'm not going to lie. The guacamole I made tonight probably... Lots of guap. Lots of, lot, guap. lots of guap. Oh, yeah. Guacking, guacamole, guap. Gu guapamole. You got your guapamole. You got my guapamole. Oh, that's a great line. Yeah. I be taking avocados and making guapamole. I just hopped in my guapagini. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 46. Oh, I hope I pronounced this right. We did this once. We couldn't pronounce it. S small. 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 Something that is small. Okay, yeah, so small. small. S M A L L. S M O L. Small. And in most cases, exceptionally adorable. Something that's small and adorable. You know, like my fiance, she's small. She's small. She's small, but she's slim thick, so she ain't that small. Oh. Yeah. Because you know how I like it. Uh, 47. This ain't it, chief. This ain't it, chief. That's the whole thing. This ain't it, chief. This ain't it, chief. Another way of giving disapproval for something. You know what? But you know what? This ain't it, Chief. This ain't it, Chief. I feel like I've heard that a lot. Actually. This ain't it, Chief. I've heard like, uh, and that ain't it, Chief. Yeah. Forty-eight extra, mm. extra, extra. Damn, dude, she's pretty extra. Someone who is out there and enjoys at taking things to a new level or flamboyance. Oh, yeah. Like M Mother Psilocybin yesterday was extra. extra. Yeah. Uh, 49. Here we go. Clap back. Clap back. Yeah. Response or come back after you've been called out for something. Response or read that one more time. A response or come back after you've been called out for something. What did they mean by after you've been called out? So, oh wait, you clap like you back. Clap back so someone them. like, well, like, oh, you said this and you're like, well, you, yeah. uh, I did say this and you yeah. said that. Hey you man, clap back. that's recycling. Hey, I, th I saw you throw a bottle on the street. Yeah. Clap back. clap back. Now, number 50. The final one after many, many, many casts taking us forever to finish these. Goat. Uh, how is that number 50? I feel like Goat came out in our generation. Yeah, that does sound... That's like, like a kin, the Kendrick's album I mean, was there's like, like the Goat. I don't even... Maybe it was Drake. But, oh, I think it was... Actually, I think that's the first time I heard it We using music was Drake. Was it Drake? I maybe. Know. I don't know. I don't want to give anyone credit. Hey, you know, if you know <laughs> this, the underlining uh, foundational background story to the term GOAT, go ahead and put it here. But according to this ridiculous document, it says it came from Gen Z. So, uh, just to... GOAT is shortest for the grace of all time. An acronym used to describe someone's incredible. Just to clarify, sending me was part of the last one. It was? Mm -hmm. Oh, because we started at 41. Yeah. So oh, sorry, everybody. Slap through goat. Got it. So we slaps 
Slap back goat slaps. Slap, bussin', sus, snatch, guap, small. This ain't it, chief. Extra clap back, goat. So I went to Chipotle the other day and got myself a burrito bowl. That shit slaps. Mm. Um, and when I uh, took a big bite of it, I was like, it was bussin'. Bussin'. Um, but honestly, the person working behind the counter was acting hell sus. Hot though. Okay. Snatched. Yeah. Oh, snatched. And um, so anyways, I go to pay and I was like, whoo, that's a lot of guap. <laughs> like, do you have any guac though? Is it going to be extra? That's too much guap. I can't afford that. Yeah. Um, and uh, then they handed me the burrito bowl and I paid it all up, gave my guap. And I was like, damn, that's a little small, man. Mm. That's small of the burrito bowl. And uh, I was like, this ain't it, chief. This ain't it, chief. You got to give me something bigger. Like, it is cute, but that's not it. This ain't it, chief. Um, so then they took it back and they were like, we got to get rid of this person. This is like getting really obsessive. Yeah. And then they bring me this other burrito bowl and I was like, damn, that's extra. Now that's extra. That yeah. slaps. Yeah. And um, and so then I didn't tip because, you know, like, why would I God, tip? No, you got to tip. I know. Man. I know. I was like, maybe I was like a little confused with how big like the extra the burrito bowl was and somebody behind me, you know, like clap act. And they were like, Hey man, I know you're a nurse. I know you're good for it. Tip. Tip. Yeah. And I was like, thanks for the clap back. Keep yeah. me in check. Everybody in the restaurant right here in Chipotle. This one's the goat. Goat. This is the goat keeping goat. me in line. Thank nice. you. Nice. You know, you were, you were drowning. And then you kind of you kind of swing back. So I mean, I would, I'm going to give you like a like a out of ten, like a six. Like, Salutations could have been a three. Came up to. I'll a take six. whatever you that give me today. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Zachary. That was beautiful. Give it to me. Um. So I needed to like get some air yesterday, and so my girl was just like yelling at me mm -hmm. and like all the stress from my new job, and I was like, oh, everyone needs to give me some space and so i go hop in my uh my guapagini right yeah <laughs> fully guapped out and uh um i'm not gonna lie it was a little sus because i never even bought this car it just kind of like showed up and like i had the keys mm, and uh right. um but uh i did i did lick the leather and it was bussing <laughs> yeah dude like it was clean You're almost like someone came in and cleaned the whole interior for me um and it slapped it slapped i'm not gonna lie but uh so i i'm going i'm going and they i didn't hit that chipotle but i did pull up on that taco bell <laughs> you know what i mean oh, man we, we love the TV. you know what i mean like and then uh it was closed uh -huh. and i was like this ain't it chief this ain't it chief this ain't it chief no. and uh i was being a little extra i'm mm. not i'm not gonna lie i mm. had i had quite a bit of a fit and then this guy just poof, right in the back of my guapagini man no way so i hop out and i'm like you just hit a goat okay that's it did you say clap back i missed a couple <laughs> <laughs> It's hard. I thought I was gonna go somewhere with that man, and I like how at the beginning of this you were like, "Oh, I like these words. These are these are my words." <laughs> well, no, I just thought I liked them better than no, the last one. No, it's really hard to improv <laughs> brand new Gen Z slang to think you know how to talk it, man. That's the point of this. I have to be on a good uh, a good story, and uh, when you start talking about Chipotle, I lost all train of thought. <laughs> I win. I win. <laughs> I won. I was like, "What am I gonna talk about?" I should have just gone back into Walmart. <laughs> yeah, That's got the go most. Go back to Walmart. Go back to Walmart. You can always go anywhere. Chipotle the or Walmart. The second I hop in a Guapagini, you're stuck in the Guapagini, yeah, man. Exactly. You can't get out. My, it's, as long as you're ordering from somebody, then yeah. you can make a whole conversation out of ordering. Yeah, true. Um, all right. Good job. Good job. That that's was the, it for Gen Z. That's the end of the Gen Z. Thank, thank the Lords. We finished it. I mean, I know. And I, uh, if you're wondering how we feel about Gen Z slang, I love it. I love I honestly, it. Y'all are killing it. I think that um, don't ever change. Just keep growing. Was I'll that, pick that up later. I'll that pick confusing? it up later. Is that confusing? To, don't ever change. Just keep growing. Uh, I don't know about you, Zach. How are we feeling about going on over to that game cam? Game cam. So this is going to be Labyrinth 2.0. Labyrinth 2.0, which uh, the last time we played, I remember very vividly, because yeah. yeah. it wasn't that long ago. It wasn't. Uh, that you 
completely smashed me. Well, I only smashed you because I had one good run. And that's kind of the way this game works. If you just get one good one run, good run, it's pretty tough to beat it. And so I had a pretty good run. Yeah. I got to like 45 or something. The other thing I'll say is, I remember the last time I'm going to be more aware of it this time, is that I don't think the table is perfectly level. So like it's learning what angle the table is actually at so that you can get the ball to roll correctly. Well, if you've noticed, there's these little knobs here that you can level it yourself. Yeah. And uh, once again, we're going to give another shout out to Grandpa Spongy, yep. better known as Uncle Mark. Yep. Um, the magician, the uh, architect, the wood designer, the painter, the gardener, um, a very wonderful and uh, positive influence in our lives yes, who sir. got us this game we played as kids. So, Uncle Mark, this one's for you. The uh, most frustrating game to ever be played. Well, and I, and I think I mentioned on the last one we played it that we should get an upgraded version. But I think what makes this one so tough is how janky it is and how old it is. Uncle Mark got this for us when I was like eight. No, no, no. He bought this for you. me. Or I bought this, actually. I think he got this for me and Evan when Evan was like four or five. It was a Christmas he came and visited. Are you sure? Yeah, this is this is the, this is the one he bought me. I think he got this. Might even be Evans, but he's he did buy this for us. All right, I'm gonna go first because I won the last time. Um, all right, this is Labyrinth 2.0. And real quick before we jump into this, uh, we do three matches, right? Three yep. matches each because it can get pretty lame. Just doing one. All the music you're hearing right now is from yours truly, um, Nene. And uh, I counted the amount of tracks we have. Yeah, it's a little more over 20 now. No, it's four, 14. Oh, really? 14, because we started... Oh, we started later, huh? Episode 10. So, and are, so we, this will the, be, are we trying to get to 20? Is it this is like a number? number? I mean, honestly, like I think 10 tracks is good 10. for a game track. Um, I just haven't spent the time yet to like go through them and pick out the first 10, but this will be number 15. Are you going to want me to mix and master them? You mean, yeah, dude. Hell yeah, dude. They're going to sound Chorus good. Chorus Records, those boys They're studios joining forces. Are you kidding me? It's amazing. They're going to sound good. Um, if you haven't yet, go listen to my new song. I don't think that you need to mix them, though. Like, there's a part no, of me that like, I, I can do. Like, I don't even mix anymore, dude. I can do general mix it. What? I don't even mix anymore, dude. This is the guy who literally <laughs> made like seven different mixes of his last track that just went out. Came into my car and was like, can I please listen to it in your car again? I can't figure out the subs. No, no dude, that was so bad because uh, I on version 12 and I thought that was it. Version it, 12, it, this guy it, it doesn't sounded, mix anymore. It sounded so good on all speakers, all speakers, man. I was like, oh, this is this is the best mix I've ever done. I listened to it in your car and right when the bass comes in, it's like, <clears throat> yeah. and I can't hear my voice. And I'm like, how, how, Did how? I tell you that my subs how? blew, by the way? good so that might be why <laughs> but uh i fixed it and it sounded better in your car so i think it was the round song round but, um, one good luck carry on wayne i really i really want to get a good first round <laughs> <laughs> oh man it's not a good start for zachary but that's okay that's okay oh man that that was great I got um. That, uh, I, I feel I bad. got a two. So are we doing? Um, it's just the best score out of three, right? Uh, it's the best out of three. So you got two. I have. I got two. Maybe you'll get a one. Oh, there's hair. Uh, yeah. We don't like hair. There's hair like all. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of yeah, gross. At more. The At dog. more. There he is. I hear him right now. Ah, oh, this this is so janky. I know. It's, it's so sticky. <laughs> Okay, I'm, if you're listening right now, Nathan is just passing eight, and oh, it's, oh, it's oh, getting oh, stuck oh, there. Oh, 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 yeah, he's going through the triangle on ten. This is a tricky. Okay, he's past twelve. He's past thirteen. He's past fourteen, fifteen, six, no! fifteen, fifteen. Nathaniel got fifteen. Fifteen. Zach has two. Let me get, take this. We're gonna go ahead and keep the tally here, just in case we forget. You know me. All right, I'm this get, is I'm gonna get serious here. This is uh, signs, also known as Zachary or Boo, as we called him growing up. Um, round two, um, playing Labyrinth 2.0. He passes number five. He's making his way past six, which is a, oh, and he drops it down to twelve. But we know seven. that it was seven. It was actually I dropped him to twenty-one. I know your dyslexia just kicked in, but it's okay. I did. I saw it from upside down. Round two for Nene. Uh, 15 the first time. We're going to go into it nice and tricky here. I feel like I got a little warmed up. 
<laughs> the squeaking. <laughs> All right, Nate's passing 10. If you're, oh, no, Nate dropped into 12. He almost predicted his own future. There it is, Zach. This is Zach's final round, number three. So if I don't beat uh, 15, Nate takes the win. Well, do you want me to add this up really quick? So two plus seven equals nine. And 15 plus 12 equals 28. Oh, I thought we were doing seven. The, I thought we were just doing the highest number. No, it's adding it up. Oh. So you have nine, I have 27. So Zach, technically you need a lot more. Oh, well that changes things. Get to the top, baby. You need to get a big number here. And mind you, I know that there is a, a lot of like winning and losing that's happening on this cast between the both of us, but I think of it more as bonding, you know? Whoever wins and loses, this feels more like you and I get to bond. Oh, oh! Damn, I dropped another 12. Well, you know. He just took the win. I don't even, I, no, I, get I, it. I, I want to take one more it. round. Come on. It. I want to see if I can beat my 15. Good game, by the way. I'm going to give this to you. But you know what? Zach's a little bit pissy. He put it right there in the middle of the board. <laughs> you know, that's just, it's just not, not good sportsmanship. You know, we're I played let it slide. so much better Very last good game. <laughs> it's a middle finger again, that <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> If you didn't, if you're right, just Nate's listening, passing one. Nate's Zach passing keeps two. Nate's shaking my hand three. with his middle finger. Nate's passing three, four, passes five. He's turning the corner on six, turning, turning the corner on six, seven, eight, eight, nine, ten, twelve, third. He's coming up on third. Okay, okay. He's trying to get control of it again. He's wiggling the, wiggling the pieces back and forth. He's going through 14, 15. He's bouncing off 15. No! 16! I don't, I don't. Good game. Okay, well, he got 16. None of us really scored well. What? Uh, wait, 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 no, hold on. I got 16. Uh, 16 plus 27. What did you get the last one? 12? 12. You, my highest score, you got higher than that every time. Damn, every 2.0 we've played, I believe you have finally taken the W on every 2.0, which is going to make the 3.0 just as good. I think you got the uh, the number of 21, right? 21. 9 plus 12 equals 21. Does it? Yeah. What's 9 plus 12? Wait, wait, wait. What, what's, what's 7 plus 12 or something? 9, 9 plus 12 is 21. Isn't that one of your songs? 21, 21, 21. Yeah. Want to get high like 21. Yeah. Shit don't stick. I'm never done. Nah. You so, always go to that quick beat. But that was cool sounding. Thanks. Try it one more time, ready? All Before right. we finish the cast. Um, actually, don't do it again real quick. I'm gonna cut the music right here. Now, let's do it, ready? 21, 21, 21, kick it. 21, 21, 21, yeah. I wanna get high on a level like 21. Thick, I'm never done, nah. Your shit won't stick, I'm never done. Put the gun down, be a man. Never under plan when I never understand. I know how to- I can't do it without the music. That's hot though, bro. Thanks. Oh, that was hot. Thanks. That was dude. fun. We got to do more music on the cast. You know, I was going to tell you that, that we are incredible musicians, dude. Yes. <laughs> and we should be playing music sometimes. Maybe not every time. All right. Uh, we are at 92 minutes. Thank you for listening and Thanks. watching and being here. And uh, to those of you that have sent us personal messages from our past. Yes. Um, and our own personal family uh telling us that they really appreciate you appreciating our work and that we're getting better and that you like our conversations. Oh, thank you so much for the love. Yeah. Thank you um, so, so much. It goes way farther than, you know, and, uh, but if, if you didn't send it to us, we'd still keep going. Totally. And but uh, this really helps. Thank we you. send all the love to everyone that, uh, all the trauma we're talking about. And there's some people that have hit us up that have gone, that went through all of it with us. And it's- just, And they're gonna be on this cast because we asked point, them and yeah, they said they'd love some, to be on At some here. point, we're gonna get some interviews with these people and it's gonna be maybe the best cast yeah. we'll ever have. And um, we are just so thankful for you hitting us up. So please know that you are making our day and you are making this podcast incredibly worth it. So thank you for that. Yeah. And um, until next week, uh, if you notice, Chantel wasn't in house, our graphic designer. She's out of town for two weeks, but we'll be back not next episode, but the episode after that, which is very wonderful. And our website and then should we'll be, be up shortly yeah, after. Shortly after that, our website's gonna be up, and our website looks really good. Yeah, I'm very excited. She excited. is very good. Very good. Very We're good. lucky. And then after that, she said she's gonna keep uh, hanging out in the cast yeah. and designing our merch, merch. during during live cast, which I'm super excited about. Yeah, we're tiptoeing into the merch scene and uh, all proceeds going back into those boys studios to better this podcast, to get more people on it. It gets also, more help. Also, I just don't have the time to go shopping. 
Yeah, I would like to I need some clothes. help. I need some clothes. I'd model our own clothes. Oh, yeah, I, I need clothes. I love you, man. Love you too, man. This has been really good tonight. Yeah. Thank you for letting me reintegrate peacefully on this podcast. Definitely. And also putting on record my experience because I felt like I journaled it down. Definitely. I love it. Um, love you, everybody. Thank you for listening. We'll see you next week. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.